Hi, um, I would like to talk to you today about three common UWB ranging techniques. The first one, in a single-sided two-way ranging, there are two devices involved, an initiator device and a responder device. And the goal is for the initiator device to find its range or distance from the responding device. The way the method works is that the initiator would send a pull signal or packet, UWB packet, to the responder device. The responder device, once it receives that message, would process it and then send the response back to the initiator device. That response would also include the processing time and a timestamp from the responder device. The initiator device would use the exchange information to find time of flight and based on that would find the distance. The main two parameters the initiator device is going to use, one is T sub loop, which is shown in the figure. It's the time between the when the polling signal was sent and the time that a response packet was received by the initiator device. And the second parameter is T sub reply as shown, which is the responder's processing time, which was sent in a message to the initiator device. The initiator device then would use these two parameters as shown in the formula to find time of flight, which is the travel time between the signals from the initiator device to the responder or vice versa. Once TOF is calculated, then one can calculate the distance by just multiplying the time of flight by speed of light. One of the requirements for the single-sided two-way ranging to work is for the clocks of initiator and responder devices to be fully synchronized. Now, if these clocks are not synchronized and there's a clock clocking time difference, that would affect the accuracy of the time of flight measurements and therefore the distance. Double-sided single, uh, double-sided two-way ranging uses extra measurements to compensate for this clock difference and therefore increase the accuracy of the distance measurement. The double-sided two-way ranging would use two single-sided ranging to compensate for the effect of clock difference. In this case, both devices would exchange information and they can both estimate the time of flight. Then um, these measurements are used and the formula as shown to estimate the time of flight. By using these extra measurements, it can be shown that the time of flight measurements could be made more accurately and the clock difference effects can be compensated in the double-sided range. Now I'm going to be talk talking about time difference of arrival or TDOA technique. TDOA would require multiple anchors which are placed in known locations and the goal is for an initiated device to find this location with respect to these anchors. The way the technique works is that the initiated device would send a poll message commonly known as blink and then the anchors would receive this signal at different times because they're supposedly at different distance from the initiator. And the way the location of the initiator is found is that each anchor can use this time difference information to, and using multilateration calculations to find the XY coordinate of the initiator device. The assumption in this technique is that all anchors are synchronized and this timing information is shared between all anchors. A Z coordinate also can be calculated if another anchor is added to the system. Thanks for uh, joining me today and um, if you wish to learn more about UWB, please check the content on FIRA website.